So to get access to the repo which we're going to be using, this is the repository with the Angular JS application that we're going to be migrating throughout this course. Just go to github.com slash jawache slash angularjs hyphen migration. And then what we want to do is we want to clone this repo locally onto our computer. So to get the clone URL, just click clone or download, grab the URL, I'm going to copy it and then just go into your favorite terminal and find a folder where you want to store the repo and just do git clone, paste in the URL, hit enter and this will then clone the entire repository onto your computer. Now once it's cloned, it will create a folder called AngularJS hyphen migration. So you can see the into that. Now I've already done this, so it's already cloned onto my computer. Now the default branch it's going to be on is master, which you can check just by typing git branch and whatever one is green and with the star next to it, that's the current branch that you're on. And if you ls the folder, you'll see it's got a, a bunch of different files there. So next up we want to open this folder in our favorite editor. My favorite editor right now is Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to use that now to do with Visual Studio Code, just type code and then dot, which is the current folder, press enter and that will open up Visual Studio Code on the current folder. Now I've already done this. I'm just going to open up or just navigate to the Visual Studio Code application here. Now you can use whatever editor that you want that you feel comfortable with. I'm very comfortable these days with Visual Studio Code and it's actually completely free. So I recommend that you go download and install it. But again, you can use whatever editor that you want. Now, we were using another terminal there. We can actually use a terminal from within the Visual Studio Code as well. And that's the way I'm going to continue with the rest of this course is using the terminal that's embedded inside Visual Studio Code. But again, it's the same terminal that you would be using external to Visual Studio Code as well. So to open in Visual Studio Code, just type control and then backslash, then this opens up the terminal here. Now I've got all these few things running there. I'm going to close them. Let me open that up again. And there we go. So it's opening up a terminal. Here we go. So this is exactly the same terminal that I had opened up in the other shell. Now I'm using Z shell, but if you're using bash, it'll open up bash or, or whatever shell is your default shell on your application, it will open that up here. Now once this is set up, there's a few things we need to do just to make sure that everything's uh, being cloned correctly. So the first thing we want to do is we want to install all the dependent modules. Now we're using NPM, so we're using Node. Double check what version of Node that you're using. Oop. Um, I'm using version 8.5. Just use whatever is the latest uh, stable version of Node and that will do you absolutely fine for this project. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to install all the dependent modules. So I'm going to type npm install and press enter. And this is looking in the package.json file, this one here, and it's going to find all the dependent modules and install them. I've already installed them, so uh, it's all already set up. All the modules are going to be installed inside node modules here, like that. The next thing we need to do is we need to run a couple of node scripts. If you look in package.json, you can see in the scripts section here, there's a couple of things that we, we can run now. A few of these, so we now need to run node setup, the setup script here. So to do that, we would write npm run and the name of this script is which is setup. So we're going to run npm run setup. And what this will do, it will really run Bower install. So let's just try running that. And that's done good. So that's actually installing all the Bower modules in libs here. So this is all the stuff that we'll be including in our application are now included in libs. So I'm using Bower because not a lot of people use Bower anymore. It's kind of an older package management tool. But usually if you're migrating an AngularJS application, you usually are migrating an old AngularJS application. The AngularJS application I'm migrating is an old one that I created use, where I used Bower. So I think it's a great example of how you can migrate from AngularJS, even migrating from package management systems like Bower to more modern solutions as well. And the next thing I need to do is run npm run server. So our application uses a backend, a backend which is actually based on a JSON uh, file. So we have in the data folder here, we have a file called db.json. So if I click that, you can see it's just a JSON file with just a bunch of uh, information 
here like this. Now what you can do, what we're using is we're using a tool called JSON server, which when you point it to a JSON file, will create us a nice little API server that we can use. So if I was to copy this URL into Chrome, you can see it's actually returning a whole bunch of everything as JSON. And then if I want to grab an individual item, I could if I wanted to just pass the ID there and it will return the individual item. So JSON server is just a really, really nice, quick, simple way of giving us a API server, which we can develop with locally. And we're gonna be using this as a proxy for perhaps your production API server. Let's go back into here. So now we've got the server running and we've set everything up. Let's create another terminal now in Visual Studio Code. To create a new terminal, you can just click the plus button here and this will create a second terminal. So if you want to flip back to the first one, you can go here. But now if you want to use the second one, we go here. And in this second terminal, I'm going to run npm start. Now, because start is a special script where you don't need to actually type npm run start you can just type you can miss out the run and just type start and this is now got everything running and now the application is now running or should be running on localhost 5000 so if i now go back into here open it up 5000 and there you can see the application is running and it seems to be running perfectly fine um, and we can do things like delete yep everything's running perfectly fine in our application